So I just basically finished rebuilding this harness. Uh, I've got one connector that I'm still got on order, but um, I figured I'd do a good connector overview on the 7M GTE harness. Now this one is pre-89, but I'll go over some of the specifics for post-89. And uh, I have one, another one of these videos, but it's in the car. You can't really see anything. So I figured this would be a nice close up to show all of them. So we're gonna start over what I call the water neck side. So our two farthest connectors here are the airflow meter, which is a five pin, and the oil pressure sending unit. So now this oil pressure sending unit is, this connector is a little unique. You can see it has a slot here and that's to clip over the little bung on the sensor. And this is a yellow with a black stripe. Moving on up, we've got a, another uh, temp, or we've got a temp sensor this time. And this is for the gauge in the gauge cluster. And that's a yellow with a green stripe. And it looks really similar to the oil pressure sending unit, but it does, uh, it is different. Next one in this bundle is the EFI water temp sensor. So this is the sensor that tells the, the computer how hot the coolant is. And you'll notice it looks like an AV1 style, but that keyway on the top there is offset. So an EV1 connector will not work unless you buzz off the keyway on the, on the actual sensor. Okay. So one quick thing to cover with these while I'm here to remove them, that little middle clip you see there, you have to actually take a, a pick and I usually come in from this side and you got to push this middle tang up and out because there's a little, little uh, ramp that the sensor actually has that'll go into that window. And these are a pain in the ass, but that's the, that's the trick. You get those, get a little pick and you push that metal piece up towards the top here. And then this will come off. Okay, moving on. We've got, we'll come up to the next junction. And uh, so, oh yes, one, one more thing with this connector. This is the pre-89 version of this, the Post-89 swapped this out to a more modern style connector. And it also has a special keyway. So back to here, we've got three more connectors here. And this is our pre 9 sensor. So three pin, the top pin is number one. That's our shielded wire. That's the signal or this, that's the actual sensor signal to the ECU. Up next is the cold start injector time switch connector. So this is a EV1 style. You can see the keyway up top. It's right in the middle. So this is the temp sensor that tells, or that doesn't tell, but it allows the flow of energy to the cold start injector. So it, main, it mainly just maintains temperature, or it maintains that the operation of that cold start injector during colder temps. So the next connector we got here is the cam position um, four pin. Now this is a cam and crank sensor technically. And the uh, you'll see some information out there saying that the wire colors don't match and that's referring to the, the harness on the CPS itself, not the engine harness. All the manuals and everything will, will cover the engine harness side. So that little harness that goes inside the cam position sensor is part of that component. It's part of that assembly. So you won't see any information specifically for that. So those wire colors won't ever match up so if you if you lose that connector on that side you got to look up some images online and try to find there is some information out there but it's hard to come by all right so the one thing that's missing from this area is the ac fan temp switch and that's a round connector and it looks like the knock sensor connector like that guy right there but it's blue so this harness isn't using the factory ac fan so wasn't needed, pulled it out. So going up, we've got the, uh, this is the harness, this part of the harness goes over the cam or right behind the cam covers, uh, or the, the, uh, the cam gear covers. we come up to our first junction point. Now we're gonna take off this leg here, come down to the farthest connector. This is the check connector. So this is our, this is where you check 
for codes, you jump to you jump the couple pins. T E. So T and E one there will is how you check for engine codes. You jump those two wires. B positive and F P. Those two check the uh, fuel pump operation, so you can bypass the, fu the fuel pump relays and the fuel pump resistor. And these things break all the time, but that's really the only thing these things are used for anymore. Unless you have some really old school tech to hook up, you can get a tax signal and some other information out there. But it's no longer needed, or it's not it's not needed for anything else. So coming back up, first junction right here. This comes out to the EFI resistor or the fuel injector resistor. So the 7M turbos have low impedance fuel injectors. This makes them high impedance. Well, it doesn't make the injector high impedance. It just makes the uh, the resistance high. Moving on up. Next junction, we've got a handful of connectors here. So we'll start with these two green ones. This is for the turbo igniter. So the large one here is power... I think ground and the uh, signal wires to the coils. And then the other connector is signals to and from the ECU. So the igniter has one signal wire that's imperative that goes to the ECU, and that's the IGF signal. And that basically says to the computer that the coil has fired, confirmation that it's fired, move on to the next one in the in the circuit so if that if that one wire isn't uh there even if all the rest of the wires are good the ec or the ecu won't let the, the system run all right next connector is the c1 connector so this is a six pin that connects to the front engine bay harness at the fuse box so this carries the uh efi main power which is b positive black with a red stripe it carries the MREL signal from the ECU to the to the main relay, to that EFI main relay, to actually turn it on. And then it also has the BAT, the BAT battery, constant 12 volt to the ECU to uh, maintain codes uh, after you turn the key off. There's also um, some uh, hazard horn wire going through here. And this connector did get updated in the post 89s and it's not compatible. Okay. So, coming back up to this junction up here, the first bundle is, uh, let's start here. This is the coil harness, or this connects to the coil sub harness. It's all the signals to tell the, uh, and power to tell the, um, the coils to fire. Here, the six pin is our idle air control valve connector. The two center wires there, so that's pins two and five they actually have the B positive uh, power here. So the ECU power. Uh, first and second fuel injector connectors. So here's a trick that took me way too long to figure out. Toyota has a top slot and, top slot and bottom slot uh, fuel injector connector, at least on the old stuff they do. Bottom is low impedance, top is high. So low, low slot, low impedance. High slot, high impedance. All right, next bundle, we've got two going up and two going down. So then we'll go to the up one. So this is our TPS connector, four pin, similar to the EV style, but you can, you, cause you can see the keyways there, but it is four pins. And then our number three fuel injector. And then at the bottom, we've got our front knock sensor, code 52. If you ever dealt with that, you know the nightmares. This is the fuel pressure bump VSV. So the factory fuel system utilizes a, uh, a little VSV to give the fuel pressure a little bump. I'm not really sure exactly when it's supposed to do that, but that's what that connector's for. So this is a brown one. You can see the keyway there, and it's towards the front of the engine. Now the... That's common through all years, same connector. The knock sensor connector, however, in a very select handful of cars from 1992, they went to the Jay-Z style connector. So if you have a 92 car or a 92 harness, 
that may be different. All right, next bundle, we've got two coming top, a bunch going down. So the two top ones, that's our number four injector and our cold start injector. So you can see this is the EV style and this is consistent through all the years. They never changed that EV style for the cold start injector. All right, so coming down, we'll grab this one very quick. This is our rear knock sensor. It's back just in front of the starter. Pain to get to, but can get to it. Down this leg, we'll grab, we'll grab this long one first. So this is the backup light connector for the RM54. And just a side note, the backup connector for the W58 is not the same. It's an actually, it's a it's an older style round barrel connector and it's not compatible. Back up here, we've got, the, we'll start with this one. We've got the starter signal. So this is the, the signal from basically from the key that tells the starter to uh, engage. Here we've got a bundle of grounds. So this is slightly different than the factory configuration when I rebuild these harnesses and specifically the airflow meter harness. I just, uh, instead of running this ground all the way back to the ECU, grounding it there, I ground it here. So the original configuration, that wire ran all the way back to the ECU, connected to a bunch of other grounds that all connected at one point. So they were making the harness more efficient in the sense that they had one crimp point versus two. And then they ran that wire all the way back here. Um, so I, I just like to save some material and, and uh, you know, just put a, a lug connector right here from the airflow meter and ground it. And I, I've rebuilt you know, dozens of these harnesses, so there's no change in operation. So it's it's all connected to the same ground system. There's no resistance or anything to worry about. So, uh, but the factory harness will just have these two uh, ground lugs like this. Now this is the E1 main, E2 main, and I think that's it for grounds. Without these bolted down, the ECU will not turn on the EFI main relay. Okay, so, and that's, anytime somebody says my car won't start, uh, that's the first thing I, I usually typically check is the ECU grounds. I ask if the check engine light comes on, and if it doesn't, are you, is your ECU, or is your harness grounded? Because if the check engine light doesn't come on, then you know your uh, MREL is your main relay uh, isn't turning on. So this guy is a four pin connector that only three of the pins are used. This is for the vehicle speed sensor for ABS, specifically for the turbos. All right, back up here. Come to the last junction in the main part of the engine harness and that's our injectors five and six. Then the harness actually bends up to go up to the firewall. And then this is the has horn connector. So this is not needed for any operation of the vehicle. It's just for the additional uh, hazard horn for the or for the alarm system. So we'll track all the way over here. Then the harness starts to bend again. Oh, and so our water valve for the heat is right about here. And it actually sits right behind the actuator. And then we've got the, the uh, power and control for that water valve right here, this connector. And then we bend down go through the firewall grommet. And this is where we get inside the car. So the first few, the first bundle right here is the body connectors. So we've got B1, this is the most critical, uh, M1, and I think this is B2. I could be mistaken, but um, this one's really not that important. It has, uh, I believe that's the speed sensor so, and then on the automatic cars, this is this is populated with all the automatic connectors. So uh, on that note, I do wanna say right here with this bundle of connectors, on the automatics, they will have an additional two or three. I think it's three, and that's just for the automatic transmission. Okay, back to the body connectors in the dash. So the B1 connector, this carries all of the the, uh, the ignition power and the starter power, fuel pump power, everything goes through this connector. So without this guy connected, nothing works. 
the M1 connector is critical for your gauge cluster. So this is all the gauge signals, the um, check engine light, the um, tack signal, the water temp signal, and it also has the backup lights running through it, I think. It's either, or maybe the backup lights running through this. I'm not, I can't remember exactly, but because the wire colors are similar, black with a red stripe and yellow. Okay, now moving on. Now this is something specific to the pre-89s. We've got two connect, two additional connectors here that you will not see on a post-89. This guy right here that comes out of this first bundle is for the hack sensor. So that's the high altitude compensation sensor. It's basically a barometric pressure sensor that tells the ECU how far away from sea level you are, and then it can adjust the fuel trims accordingly. In the post-89s, they actually started incorporating that sensor inside the ECU, so then they didn't have to uh, mount something external. So, the next unique part is this guy. I don't recall what this does, what the signals are offhand, but it's sp specifically for the pre-89 turbo ECUs. They have another little connector that comes off the side, and this has to connect into it. And then finally, um, the ECU connectors. So pre-89, non-turbo, and turbo have the same style connectors, same pin numbers, but the turbos use a little bit more pins. These, um, these style connectors maintained on the non-turbos on the pre or on the post-89s. The turbo ones actually got a new set of connectors. They got a new set of three. They're a lot smaller, but they still same, they still carry the same, all the same wires. And I do want to note now that I remembered that the B1, M1, B2 all change after 89. So pre 89s are all the same. The, then I, the, with the exception of cars that have a super monitor, they get these extra three wires down at the bottom. So those go to the ECU to send information to the super monitor. But in the post-89 cars, well, in 89, you get a weird mix. You get these connectors, but they're gray. Same, same layout, same body, same housing, just they're gray. And then later 89s, you'll get the updated style, which are not compatible. It's still B1, uh, M1, B2, and then, a K, and then at some point they do a B3. But those are all, it's, it's a little hit or miss. So... 1990, all the books show the same layout as 89, even though we know 89 has a mixture. And then 91, I think the B1 connector changes, or, and then, uh, no, sorry, the, the M1 connector changes, and it becomes a lot larger, and then the M, or the B3 connector changes in 91 as well, or 92, and 92 is completely different from, from the rest of the harnesses, that, that I'm... I'm aware of, or 100% sure, there are, there, there's, inc in, you know, there's compatibility, like the, the B1 connector is the same for all post-89, but the M1, the B2, and B3 all get weird, they all start changing between the years, so anytime you're swapping out a post-89 harness, you have to be really careful about these connectors and the dash, because depending on the year, you get different connectors. So that covers this EC or this uh, harness, and uh, I hope this really helps 